Hello peeps and welcome back to the Age of Engineering. This is episode 67. Not last episode. This one's episode 67. Okay. So now that we got that straightened out, I'm going to show you what I've done off camera. First of all, I got tired of having to make advanced alloy every single time I wanted to make a creative capacitor bank. So, over here, I have a setup. On the back of here, I have an ender tank that's connected to my UU dimension. Here, I have a quantum tank with 35.7 million millibuckets of UU matter, pumping it all into here, which you might notice is running stupidly fast. How is it running that fast? Well, it's got two transformer upgrades in there, and underneath it, I have a quantum generator that's outputting a stupid amount of power. I believe it caps out at 32,000 EU per tick. So if you put it faster than that, it just tries to put it out in multiple pulses, but it's very glitchy. Um, we'll get back to this in a minute. I have a second atomic multiplier now working together. And in here, I am producing ender crystals and prescient crystals. Ender crystals are used to make, well, I'll show you what they're used to make in a second. But you might also notice I have scented paneling in here. Yeah. Well, I have to have royal jelly, pollen clusters, beeswax, spruce planks, and half a bucket of honey to make one scented paneling, right? Well, turns out these things are dupable. So it'll take absolutely forever, but it is possible to dupe all of the scented paneling that you need to do the quest. I'm also working on the iridium. I have 2.8k almost iridium ore. Yeah, we're making a lot of headway. I've also gone absolutely stupid crazy with the creatives. I've got six creative capacitor banks and two quantum generators running. I also put an ultimate solar panel up there to keep everything here powered up, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, what we are going to be working on this episode, and we will not achieve it this episode. This is something that will be achieved on camera next episode, but we are going to start the framework for it. We are going to work on the creative fluid tank. The creative fluid tank requires two creative capacitor banks, two quantum generators, and five elite fluid tanks. The elite fluid tanks have to be filled with empowered oil, biodiesel, vapor of levity, IC2 hot coolant, and short mead. Well, biodiesel we've done before. We know how to make biodiesel. It's not difficult to make biodiesel. I have everything I need to do that. I'm just going to do that off camera. I've already done that. Um... Vapor of Levity. I'm going to show you how to make this, but I'm going to make it off camera because this stuff is extremely slow to create. To make Vapor of Levity, you need grains of Pizality and grains of Prescience. Grains of Prescience are made by grinding a Prescient Crystal, which requires a Vibrant Crystal and a Shulker Soul. That's why I'm duping these things, because they're a pain in the ass to make. The grains of prescience are just a ground-up pulsating crystal. So, easy as hell to make. But, you also have to have Dew of the Void. We've made Dew of the Void before. Grains of Ender. Grains of Pizality. Nutrient Distillation. Well, this shouldn't be difficult, because I already have a shit ton of nutrient distillation, right? I've got these dynamic tanks over here that are just full of the stuff because I was producing it for so oh shit. My dynamic tanks glitched out and lost all of the nutrient distillation that I had stored. 13.8 buckets is all I have left. These things are totally worthless in this mod pack. 
I don't know why they're glitched so bad, but they are. So that's what this setup over here is for. This setup over here is a vat that's producing nutrient distillation from nether wart and rotten flesh and storing it in this fluid tank and pumping it into this vat, which I'm going to use to make dew of the void, which is going to pump into this tank and this vat, which I'm going to use to make vapor of levity, which is going to pump into this tank. These are elite fluid tanks. They can hold 64 buckets. This will be exactly what I need, and I'll just pick it up. Over here, this is a basic fluid tank for mechanism that I just kind of was using to supply honey to this. But now I don't need that anymore, so I'm just going to pump honey into another one of those tanks. Another one of the elite tanks. But I'll do that off camera. The reason why I'm going to do that, and I guess I'll show you what I need to do with it. Actually, I might just set this up now. Because this is a fermenter. Honey, fertilizer, gives you short meat. Easy. I have a bunch of fertilizers. Uh, fermenters. Actually, I guess I don't, but that's fine. I'm not that worried about it. Pop that down. That's going to quickly fill up with honey. Uh, we need to bind this to power. And we'll get a crap ton of fertilizer, toss it in there, and that's going to start making short mead for me. Oh, but I need honey to go in there, don't I? Yeah. It's going to take a lot of honey. I might actually want to make some alviaries to increase my honeycomb output. Because I have a lot of honeycombs up here that are processing. But I'm probably going to need more before all said and done. I could crate the honeycomb or the honey drops and then dupe the crates. That's another option. But I've shown you how to make short mead, so I'm not going to worry too much about that now. I will make the short mead off camera. Empowered oil. Empowered oil is made. Well, it, it, you can't actually see how it's made here. But generally, you get canola oil. Right? And from the canola, uh, with the canola oil, you drop crystallized canola she uh, seeds in it, and you get crystallized oil. Then after that, you drop the empowered seeds into that, and that gives you your empowered oil. So this stuff actually is not difficult to make. Basically, it just requires a canola press. And some canola, and some crystallized canola, and empower canola. Again, this is stuff I'm going to do off camera, because you guys have seen people make empowered oil before, and it's only 64 buckets. That's not difficult at all. What we are going to work on, is we are going to work on... Uh, let's see. Powered oil, short, short mead, biodiesel. We might actually get started on a build for the empowered oil this episode, but we're going to work on the IC2 hot coolant first. And I actually had to look up how this is done because I have never screwed with uh, actively cooled reactors in the new industrial craft. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you guys is this thing is charged to a stupid amount now. Because I'm taking in 15,000 RF a tick, and that's with both of those empower or both of those transformers running the atomic multipliers that's with both of those running i'm still getting 15,000 a tick so let's come over here where i have a nuclear reactor set up this ought to look familiar this is the same setup we used to use except now we're going to modify this a little bit what we need to do is we need to encase this in what's it called we need to encase this in a reactor pressure ve uh, reactor pressure vessel. There. We're also going to need a couple of fluid ports, and I've already made the reactor pressure vessels off camera. Uh, those are made by combining stone and lead plates, so these are cheap. Uh, we're also going to need a reactor redstone port, 
because we'll need a way to turn the reactor on. Uh, I'm actually going to want to get probably a... Well, no, I shouldn't need a third fluid port. One for input, one for output will work. Um, I will need a reactor access hatch because this is how you actually get into the reactor. And then I'll just need a bunch of these reactor pressure vessels. So, what we're going to do... Hatch has to be attached somewhere, preferably to the reactor. This is how you actually get into the reactor. Pressure vessels, you just kind of build a box around it. Okay, I want to put my fluid ports, I think, on both sides. So I'm going to have one fluid port here. I'm going to have one fluid port here. The redstone port, I'm going to put on top of the access hatch. Excuse you, I don't think so. You're not blowing up my reactor. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. What did that... Creeper head? Okay, sure. And now, this thing should function as a multi-block. Hi, bunny. I should be able to access the reactor from here, and you can see I've got new G, uh, new GUI here. Redstone port lets me turn it on. These let me turn it on and off. Let's float back over here. And over here I have two ultimate fluid tanks for mechanism that I have made IC2 coolant in. We're going to grab some ender fluid conduit because it's the fastest fluid conduit and I'm probably going to need that speed. Pop you on there. Uh, one ultimate tank there, one ultimate tank there. Extract, always. Extract, always. Insert. If I look in here, I should have a full thing of IC2 coolant now. And I do. Good. Uh, ender fluid conduit out. Extract always. And that rabbit is going to drive me insane. We're going to need another one of those elite fluid tanks. Or not elite fluid tanks. Uh, yeah. Actually, it is elite fluid tank from Neotech. So this is me. Damn it. We need a basic to get an advanced to get an elite. Pop that down. Insert. And it should just take a lever. Pop the lever on there. And when I flip this lever, there's a creeper over there. When I flip this lever, this thing should turn on. And we are producing tons of power. We're also producing a lot of hot coolant. You can see this thing's filling up pretty fast. The reactor design should be safe. What I'm watching for is I'm watching for the reactor to stop outputting hot coolant. When it stops outputting hot coolant, I need to turn it off. Oh, 
there we are. I'm going to turn that off. It's going to stop producing power. In theory, it's going to stop producing heat. Please stop producing heat. There we go. And that is an elite fluid tank. Now, Neotech tanks, you can't break with your bare hand. Uh, you have to use the Neotech wrench to pick these tanks up. If you use anything but this, it will not re it will not retain its fluid. So that's one thing done already. That actually did not take nearly as long as I thought it would. So, in here, we're going to put our Elite Fluid Tank of IC2 Hot Coolant. Now, what do I still have assembled over here? I still have this Industrial Squeezer. I'm going to need the Industrial Fermenter set up again. I need this Crusher to be out of here. Because I need to make Biodiesel. Uh, we'll deal with that later. Um, no. Up. Now I am going to temporarily, I think, hijack this. I'm going to break the carrots that I have out. We're going to plant canola in here. Put those away. Put the center paneling away. I'll dupe that later. We're going to plant some canola. Now, I'm not entirely... Okay, this will not accept the canola seeds. Oh wait, that's canola, not canola seeds. That would explain it. Now, here's the thing. I'm not sure if this greenhouse is going to recognize this canola or if I'm going to have to break it by hand. But, we'll know soon enough. Um, it is recognizing it. Good. So, now I just need some coal. Get some blocks of coal. Add them to the greenhouse. Get that carbon monoxide generator running. Or carbon dioxide, not carbon monoxide. That would be bad. Uh, we're going to need to get a couple of drawers. Because I'm going to want to put one there, and one there. That should output the canola seeds to there. It's not going to actually output the canola, is it? Damn. Okay, that's fine. No. Yeah, it's not actually going to output the canola, so this one's useless. That's okay, though. As long as it goes into there, I'm fine. Uh, we are going to need a canola press. Which is actually really cheap and easy to make. And then we're going to need fermenting barrels. Which means we're going to need wood casings. And I think I want four fermenting barrels to go with one canola press. I think that's going to be optimal. We'll do the canola press right here. This thing does take power, so I'm going to link it like that. And then the fermenting barrels we're going to do there, 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 and there. And now we just need canola. Toss that in there. So that's giving me canola oil. That's giving me oil. Good. I'm pretty sure it's oil that I need. So we're going to need... I'm going to get a fluid retrieval node for this part. So, 
So, uh, I need more transfer pipes than that, don't I? And we're gonna need some sort of tank. Uh, those are liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen. You're empty. Of course, I could use pressurized fluid tanks. No, I can't because I don't have any dark steel. Well, that sucks. I have an elite fluid tank here that's empty. We'll just use that. Retrieval node on top. That's not good. Uh, this needs to be a little further out. Otherwise it was going to set up a loop. There. That should, in theory, Pull the oil out of these into this. It is, but it's running real slow. So, uh, speed upgrades. Okay, so that gives us oil. Uh, we need crystallized canola. And we're going to need an empowered canola here in a minute. <laughs> crystallized canola is really easy to make. Just take canola seed and zap it. By now I should have at least one bucket in there. Yep. Why am I going from 4.7 to 4.9? Don't know. Don't care. Um, since I have these on me, we'll just use this. And we'll need a bucket. I already have 10 to do with a void bucket. Eh, whatever. Okay, so, oil. Pop that down, throw in your crystallized canola seed, and you get crystallized oil. Throw that down, throw your empowered canola seed in, and now you have empowered oil. Really, really easy to make. Uh, why? Why is that a thing? Did the butterfly just mess everything up? Did the butterfly seriously just break my greenhouse? I don't know. Um, I do know we need more canola. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this is because on the other side here, I'm going to bore through. Now I have access to the back of the canola press, so I can put a drawer up here, get a couple of item conduits. Extract always, hit insert, canola, and automatically fueling the canola press. Producing oil, although I don't know why this is having such a hard time retrieving. So 
So let's just get fluid conduits. I'm tired of messing with it. Insert. Disabled. Extract always. And you. And you. And finally you. There we go. This should actually produce oil a little faster than I can ferment it. But I'm okay with that. Really, I just need to wait for this thing to fill up. And it's going pretty fast. Um, I will need a bunch of canola seeds because I need to get a stack of the empowered ones, which means I need five stacks. And I also need to get my empower set up again, don't I? Okay, well, I'll just set up the empower over here. You two and pop one two pop two pop link 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 uh, I need a I need two stacks of crystallized except empowered seeds. Do these take crystallized? No, they take regular canola. That's what I thought. So, I need... I guess I need to shut that off. Guess I also need to take that off. So, two stacks of crystallized. Um, I'll need some hoppers. Six of them, actually. Like that. Turn that on. That way I can pick up the stuff I just dropped. And one, two, three, four, five, one stack, two stacks, three stacks, four stacks, one stack of those, and bam. These things create really fast. So we'll leave those to do their work. Over here, by now, I should be pretty close. Yep, I have a full stack of each of these. I'm actually going to make four stacks of each of these. Because I don't want to have to worry about that anymore. Um, pulsating iron, I actually don't have automated. So I'm going to need to make some more pulsating iron. Can I do this in... No, I have to do it in an alloy smelter. Damn. I was hoping I could do it in this. I reassembled my arc furnace. Because it's just the easiest way for me to make some things that I don't feel like duping. Um, let's put some of this stuff away. I don't need all the canola on me at the moment. The magnet card I can put back in my crafting terminal. The empowered oil bucket I'll toss in there. So, ender pearls. Sixteen stacks of you. Four stacks of you. That'll give me four stacks of pulsating iron. 
I don't know why the ball of fur isn't automatically putting stuff in. It's supposed to whitelist balls of fur for magnetic, but it's not working. I don't get it. Um, yeah, 39,000 advanced alloy. Look how fast it's creating. I have iridium reinforced plates in here too, but they take stupid long time to actually do anything. Same with iridium ore. Sturdy casings, machine chassis I have in there also. So I really don't see any reason to duplicate anything except for the basic capacitors, which I'm going to set this back to duplicating those for a while. I've got 614 stacks of those plates now. How are we doing here? We've got eight of them already. Good. How are we doing here? Uh, 10 buckets of honey. Good. Let's get... Another one of these elite tanks, because I need to put the short mead into these. I'm gonna need to make some more under fluid conduit at this rate. Pop that down. Pop that down. Extract always. Insert. Yeah, I've already got 10.7 buckets of short meat. However, I am burning through honey really fast. I'm burning through the last of my combs really fast too, so I think I definitely need to make some alvearies. I'm not sure how my cat coughed up gravel, but... So let's get the sanded panelings back out, and we're going to interrupt the prescient crystals to do some more sanded paneling. Alviary is an impregnated casing with scented panelings. Impregnated casing is seed oil and a carpenter with wood. Which means I need to press some seeds, and I don't feel like doing that at the moment. So, next episode might be setting up the alviary and working on not to do the void. Or the Vapor of Levity, rather. And the Empowered Oil. Because obviously, once I get done, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that by hand, obviously. We're going to automate it. And then I just need to make some more of these creative banks. I might make a few more atomic multipliers and make a bunch more banks. Because three creative capacitor banks can keep one of these things running full time. They use 1.5 million a tick. I think. I think that's what they use. Okay, I don't need any more of you, so we'll pop those back in and let the prescient crystals start going. Um, you know what? Screw it. Uh... Oh, get up there. Uh, squeezer. Yep. I should have some chestnuts, right? I have no chestnuts? Are you kidding me? I do have some regular seeds. I guess that'll work. I don't need much. Pop some of those in. And let's figure out which one is putting it in. There we go. Are you... Are you straight up kidding me right now? Extract that. Extract 
extract that, dump it all in here. Uh, let's get another carpenter. And this carpenter, we're just going to place right here, because this is just a temporary thing. Let's get a fluid conduit. There. That ought to be plenty. No, not extract. Insert. You extract, always. That's going to give me my seed oil. Maybe. Where the hell is all my seed oil? Tell me this thing forgot about it already. This thing is buggy as shit. Um... Wood. Yoink. Does that not work? Two hundred fifty millibucks of seed oil. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's got no power. That'll help. Boink. Now you have power. Produce the impregnated casing for me, please. Impregnated casing. Get. Which means... Alviary. Get. And unless I miss my guess, this thing can be duped. So we're going to dupe the crap out of the alveary so that we can start setting up some bees that are designed to do nothing but give us shit tons of honey that we're going to use to finish making our short meat. Because as of right now, what we have got us about halfway there. Oh, it has to be honeydew. Oh, that sucks. That does suck. Um, okay. Do have some more dripping combs. Those give honeydew, I believe. Yeah, these give honeydew. If I can get nine, I can crate some. And then I can dupe the crates. And then I can just unpack them. That being said, I only have three at the moment. So good luck with that. We'll toss those in there. Since these can only be used to make honey, we'll toss those in there. Yeah, I'm out of honeydew in there. Okay, well, looks like I have more grinding to do off camera. Fun. Yeah, you guys can tell how thrilled I am about that, can't you? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has been Night Dagger with episode 57, this time at, or 67, not 57, 67. Episode 67 of Age of Engineering. Like I said last time, I'm fully intending for episode eight or episode 70 to be the last episode. And honestly, you know, I'm starting to feel like I'm not too far off from being able to actually get the creative vending upgrade. So I mean the creative vending upgrade is a creative fluid tank, 
two creative fluid tanks, an octuple compressed cobblestone. That's going to be a pain. Um, the creative gas tanks, which this one here, yeah, you have to have the gas tanks have to be uh, full to produce the creative gas tank. But once you have the creative gas tank, um, it's not it's not going to be difficult to make the second one. I don't think. Because if you use a creative gas tank, you get an empty one back, which means you fill it with gas, you pull out all the gas you ever need, and then you empty it, fill it with the next gas, pull out all the gas you ever need. So the hard part is the basic bins. Iridium ore, I'm already working on. Send it paneling, that was going to be a bitch, but I can dupe it. So it's just a matter of time. Manulian, 4096 Manulian is not that difficult. HDPE is a pain in the ass, but it's easily automatable, especially now that I have access to creative power. So honestly, the worst part of this is just the time and trying to get an octuple compressed, and that's not that difficult either. Again, it's mostly just a factor of time. So we're making pretty good headway towards getting that. Um, off camera, I'm going to finish getting everything that I need to create the creative fluid tank together and the next episode we will build our first creative fluid tank and start putting it together the stuff that we need to get the creative gas tank which takes four creative energy cubes and five basic gas tanks these is where the guide is necessary because in the creative age here it'll tell you the gas tanks have to be filled with a clean osmium slurry, hydrogen chloride, sodium, ethylene, and DT fuel. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later, peeps.